Oh, where were you going with that? That was interesting. <laughs> no, really, it really was boring and interesting. <laughs> okay, what we have here is a very cool little Art and Luthery, uh, what they call the Ami model, which is. Uh, okay. Yeah, oh. in some parts of the world. Um, it's basically like a parlor guitar. Okay. Um, but this belongs to a beginner who is now wanting to get rid of the cute little bits of masking tape that have been showing them where the notes are as they've been learning the fingerboard. So as you can see, it's left a pretty horrible, gucky residue from, from the tape. So obviously what we're going to do, we're going to do a string change and we'll kind of cover that in two separate bits, but more importantly, I'm just going to show you a nice, nice way to get rid of this kind of horrible, greasy, sticky, yucky stuff that uh, can get stuck to your guitar. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to take the strings off now and then we'll talk about what we're going to do with this tape rest here. Now, if you uh, remember back to our string changing videos from earlier, um, I'm slackening off the strings here, just unwinding them a little, but I'm making sure that the string hole in the post is at sort of 45 degrees to the neck of the guitar. So it's facing me and uh, that's going to just speed up the restringing process later. Okay, so the strings are all slack. I'm just going to use these side cutters. Not actually really gripping the pins, just using the tips of the cutters as a lever just to pull them out. These are tapered, so they go into the hole as just an interference fit. So you don't have to hammer them in. Okay. I'm not really feeling the mojo with my camera working tonight, by the way. <laughs> it's very NYPD blue of you. Um, anyway, also a loose knot here, which we'll deal with too. So, what am I going to use to clean this stuff off with? Well, quite simply, I'm going to use some nice, proper lemon oil. Not the sort of stuff you can just kind of buy from your local grocery store. Either buy it from either a music store or a proper furniture store. Um, you know, the stuff that you get from the supermarket tends to be pretty dilute. Okay, and this stuff is just really good for getting rid of these sort of sticky residues without too much hard work. I've got a piece of old cheesecloth here, which I use purely for applying lemon oil. It's all this poor little piece of rag does. A few squirts, and I'm literally just gonna wipe it on gonna let it soak in for a few minutes. Sometimes when it's really sort of heavy duty vinyl stickers and that sort of thing you might need to let it soak in for about 30 minutes or so. But we'll probably film something else. And with the wonders of time lapse doing something else, we'll come back and clean this off in a short while. Hey, so this has been soaking in for 10-15 minutes right now and I'm just gonna do a little test I'm going to just use a, a medium strength nylon pick. There's a little scrape. Got a nice, nice edge to it. And obviously, it's not hard enough to damage the fingerboard in any way. So we'll just see how well this stuff is coming off, if at all. Starting to come off already. Now we just have a go at the worst build up parts here. And probably put a little more oil on it just for a few minutes longer. The nice thing about the lemon oil is while it does contain some petroleum distillates, uh, not enough to damage anything, not like uh, using nail polish remover <laughs> or something similar, something that's more aggressive. So anyways, we discussed, you know, the idea of this was to, you know, give the student a quick way of learning the note locations on the fingerboard. Um, that's not necessarily a a method that either uh, P 
Pete or I tend to recommend or condone, um, we find a much quicker, much more efficient, and from the teacher's point of view, a much less painful way of uh, getting a student to memorize all the notes of the fingerboard is that we have a line painted in the parking lot outside the facility here and uh, they get to walk up and down it if they don't learn it. Works well. Okay, so this has had a few extra minutes since we uh, just gave it a quick sort of scrape with the side of that pick. Um, in fact, I left it long enough for Pete and I to enjoy a very nice slice of ham pizza. Um, we were fading away there and working hard for several minutes. We needed a break. Let's just wipe this off and see how we're doing. I think if Pete wants to come in for his close up right now, we'll see that it's looking pretty good. Suitably. So. The whole fingerboard condition there. And yeah, very good. Ta -ta. As I mentioned earlier, the nut was no longer properly attached to this guitar. Um, the secret with refitting a nut is basically twofold. One, you're going to glue it back on, but not with very much glue, because you do want to be able to take it off again. The other secret is where to put the glue. And a lot of people will automatically put glue on the bottom side of the nut, so they glue it to the neck, like so, with the glue joining that way. A much better way to do it is put a little bit of glue on the face of the nut so you're actually gluing to the end of the fretboard. The reason for that being the grain of the fretboard is going this way so you're actually gluing to the end of the grain fibers. And that way it's a much weaker glue joint and much easier to separate and remove later on if you need to. Technically the nut is a wear and tear item so any guitar of uh, sort of a certain age will need at least some nut work, if not a nut replacement. Oh, I'm just gonna use a little bit of crazy glue, just a very small spot in the middle, like say, off the front face. And there we go. Now the other thing to remember is basically the string tension is gonna hold the nut in place. And that's another reason why you don't really need it. Glue. Um, you literally just need to glue it enough so that it doesn't fall off when there are no strings on. Pretty light duty. 